Where is other science? Do we need more science than that? Why are we doing study after study on these stupid small little details? Coach Greg, and have you ever wondered why the people on The Biggest Loser, they often regain the weight? Is it their fault? Is it the fault of their bodies? Is it because they're eating the wrong thing? Well, today I'm going over a video by what I've learned. It's called, Why Are We Still Counting Calories? History versus science. We're gonna see, is it their fault? Is it their body's adaptation? What can we learn? What can we do? How can we lose weight and keep it off? The phenomenon this study is discussing is called metabolic adaptation, which is where resting metabolic rate dramatically slows down in response to weight loss. And is that true? Do our bodies actually slow down and burn fewer calories when we're on a diet? Yes, yes they do. If you're 400 pounds and you're eating 5,000 calories a day and you lose 200 pounds and now you're 200 pounds a day, you can't eat the 5,000 calories. If you go on a diet and then start eating 2,000 calories a day, you can't think that after you lose the weight, you can go back to eating what you did and not gain the weight back. I think everyone should know that. If you don't know that, you need to watch more videos. So yes, our bodies do in fact slow down and burn fewer calories. Our NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, it slows down. You start conserving energy. You move less. If you're eating less, your body knows that. It recognizes that. And as a survival mechanism, it says, rest more, relax more. When you're on the phone with your girlfriend, boyfriend, or circle, you're not pacing. When I was on the phone earlier today, I was pacing around the gym, walking around on the phone like this. Hey, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, yesterday it sucked. Yeah, I was so busy. Man, holy goodness gracious. That was, it's just like, you know, I was doing. And you're walking around. You're talking on the phone. Walking around. Oh, geez. Somebody peed on there. And they did. There's pee. And we'll fix that later. So you're on the phone. You're talking. You burn a lot more calories. Then if you do this. Yeah, today it was, it was shitty. I didn't really have much fun. Yeah, I want you to come over, you know. I'm feeling the urge. We need some sexy time. Can you see how much fewer calories you're burning if you don't have energy? When you go on a crash diet, you have less energy, way less. Your TE, total energy expenditure, goes down. That's why you have to eat less. So if you don't stay on that diet, you're going to regain the weight. You can't expect to lose the weight and keep it off if you go back to eating more food. Is that your body's fault? No. Your body's burning fewer calories, but guess what? At the end of the day, it's on you to not eat more. And the biggest loser, think of how stupid a show it is. Oh, whoever loses the most weight in a given amount of time is gonna win. So whoever starves themselves the most and whoever does the most exercise is gonna win. Oh, I did 10 hours of walking today and I didn't eat. Oh, really? I did 18 hours of walking and I didn't eat. Who do you think is gonna lose more weight? So it's a competition of who can suffer the most, who can go through the most torture, eat the fewest amount of calories, and burn off the most, they're gonna lose the most weight. Is that healthy? No. And of course you have dramatic before and after photos. Incredible, like, wow, how did you lose that much weight? Starving myself and exercising way too much? And then we're surprised when they regain the weight. They're doing it to win, what, $100,000? Highly motivated. It's a competition. It's like doing an Ironman, a triathlon, except it goes on for months. So they're trying to win money, they're trying to win a competition, and then the contest is over. When you're done an Ironman or a triathlon, what do you do? You probably stop and eat. You probably relax. You don't keep doing the marathon. You don't keep doing the Ironman. You stop and you eat. You celebrate. What do you think they do in The Biggest Loser? They stop and they eat. And once they start eating again, and they stop doing the crazy amounts of cardio you're doing, what do you think happens? They gain the freaking weight back. You can't then blame the body and say, oh, metabolic adaptations. You know, my body adapted. It's not my fault. I did all the work, but my body adapted, and now I gained all the weight back. I'm starving myself, and I gained the weight back. No, you started eating more because you were eating too little in the first place. You're then giving your body what it needs. Remember when I say, close your eyes? Imagine your dream physique, open them. You ain't getting it. You are not getting it. I'm not making that shit up. 
Stop having crazy, unrealistic goals. If you're 400 pounds and your goal is to be 150, it's too crazy of a goal. If your genetics are so bad that it allows you to get to 400 pounds, it's going to be extremely difficult to maintain 150 pounds. You're way better off saying, my goal is to be 250 pounds. Even though it's still overweight, it's better than yo-yo dieting up and down, up and down. After losing a bunch of weight on a calorie-restricted diet, the person's body burns less calories. They have to either exercise a lot more or eat several hundred calories less than someone of the same weight. And that is a blanket statement. That is false. That is not true. Just because you used to be heavy and have dieted down now doesn't mean you're eating lower calories than your friend. If you take 100 people of the same body weight, put them in a room and find out how much calories they're all eating, it's going to be all different. Some are higher, some are lower. Some used to be heavier, some used to be lighter, some have gained weight, some have lost weight. It depends, depends on your genetics. So just because you used to be heavier doesn't mean you need to eat less than everyone else at the same weight. I used to weigh 232 pounds, now I'm 191 pounds. Do you think that means I eat less than anyone else who's also 191 pounds? I probably eat more than almost every single person who weighs 191 pounds. Why? Because I have a fast metabolism. Even though I used to weigh 232, doesn't mean I have a slow metabolism now. I race bicycles, I have a lot of muscle. Yeah, I eat less now than when I was 232. In comparison, my body doesn't need as much energy at 191 as it did at 232. But does anyone not know that? Is that rocket science? Oh, I lost 50 pounds. Now I need to eat less. Obviously, if you've lost a lot of weight, you're going to need less calories than you used to when you're a bigger person. It's common sense, people. In order just to maintain my weight, I have to eat less than 1,400 calories a day. It's almost nothing. And no, 1,400 calories is not almost nothing. It's actually a lot of food. If you eat the right kind of food, if it's nuts, candies, licorice, it's not a lot of food. But if it's protein, ice cream shakes, popcorn, salads, wraps, and so on, it's a lot of food. And just because it's 1,400, doesn't mean it's not a lot. We are brainwashed into thinking everyone can eat a lot and if you can't, there's something wrong with you. You have a slow metabolism, metabolic damage, some kind of bullshit excuse. It is not that. The average American female eats 1,800 calories. Have you ever seen the average American female? Have ya? How do they look? They don't look freaking shredded now, do they? That means if you eat 1,800 calories, chances are if you're female, you're overweight or obese. So if you say you're eating 1,400, it's probably because that's the amount you should be eating. And you wonder why we're overweight. You go to McDonald's, there's over a thousand calories in a meal. Just because there's over a thousand calories in a meal doesn't mean we should be eating a thousand calories in a meal. It is too much. Our portion sizes are out of control. I'm not full and I find myself in a constant, well, maybe I shouldn't eat right now and... You're not full because ghrelin is punching you in the face. How many times have I said that? Ghrelin is making you hungry. If you don't eat enough, ghrelin makes you hungry. If you fill up your stomach, you eat more food, but it's low in calories. Ghrelin is it's throwing punches, it's not reaching you. It's holding back, it's, it's blocked, blocked. Blocked by the stomach that's full. If you eat low calorie dense foods, ghrelin will not be able to punch you in the face. It tries, but it's blocked. That's what you want. You want to block out hunger by being full, like when you eat in my cookbook. Do you understand now why it works? A look at the hormones circulating in their bodies would show clearly that they have less energy and have more hunger than others of the same weight. Obviously, if you used to be 400 pounds and you lose 200 pounds, you're going to be hungry. Your genetics, they suck. You chose the wrong parents. Not your fault. You can't choose your parents. But you got bad genetics. Another person that's 200 pounds, they eat whatever they want. They got the best parents. Their genetics gave them a faster metabolism. You have a slow metabolism. If you try to get down to the same weight as someone with a fast metabolism, you're gonna suffer. Less energy expenditure makes you more lethargic. Less cholecystokinin means more hunger. Less leptin signaling means more hunger. And more ghrelin also means you're hungrier. Exactly. That's why I keep telling you, if you get to your dream physique, you won't like it. You will be suffering. When you lose too much weight, it's too hard. I'm at 9% body fat right now. I wanna be five. I've been there. Like it, but I feel like shit. I have no energy, I'm lethargic, not comfortable, sex drives down. And when I eat whatever I want, I go up to maybe low 20s for body fat, a little bit overweight. I don't get to 400 pounds. I could literally eat as much as I want, force feed pizza all day long. I can't even get to 300 pounds. I could try, can't do it. I did try, couldn't do it because my body doesn't want me to be that fat. It's just lucky. I have lucky genetics, the genetics that don't let me get overly obese.
I can force feed and my body literally will want to vomit. I cannot get that fat. It's lucky genetics that I have. Some people, they don't have that. People on The Biggest Loser, they don't have that. So then when they try to crash diet and they want to get to single digit body fat, the body says, nope, we're going to make you hungry. We're going to send hormones to make you hungry. And you're like, no, but I want to be really lean. And the body says, too bad. Too bad, body. And then you keep eating, you regain the weight because you need to have balance somewhere in the middle. If you're 400 pounds, you want to be 200. Maybe 300 was where you could realistically maintain. We know that people's hunger actually decreases when they eat nothing rather than restricting calories, thanks to ghrelin levels decreasing the longer people fast. Yeah. Sometimes when you're fasting, you're not hungry at all. I've done that before. You get up and you skip breakfast and you go and you're, you don't even notice it. You're not that hungry, you're doing good. Feels good and you're thinking, well, intermittent fasting is probably the way to go. Then you start eating again. You're like, oh, I made it all the way to supper and I didn't eat. And then you can't stop eating till freaking bedtime. I've tried it, it doesn't work at all. For me, if it works for you, great. But for most people, I suggest to spread out your meals four to five times a day. You maximize protein synthesis, you'll build more muscle mass, and chances are you won't want to binge eat at the end of the day. How many times have you gone all day, done perfect on your diet, then at night you can't stick to the diet? So many times, really so many times, hate it. Ironically, while eating less slows down metabolism, eating nothing raises metabolism. You see the study? You're only allowed to drink water for four days. And for the first three days, metabolism went up. The body produced more norepinephrine, boosted your metabolism, burnt more calories. And since the study, there's more studies that have looked at the broader picture. This is a small piece of the puzzle. There's other pieces. You have to look at all the pieces of the puzzle to see what is the best diet, the best way to lose weight and keep it off. Studies are studies. Anyone can find a study to back up what they're saying. This study says, yeah, fasting's better. We can find a different study to say fasting is worse. But what is it that really matters? What really matters is what is the best way to lose fat in the real world? Like right here, not in a study. I read this and so we should do that. Well, in the real world, if it didn't work for you, it didn't work for you. And who else does it matter? Doesn't matter if it- It doesn't matter! Doesn't matter if it helped someone else. Did it help you? You need to be full. You need to be able to put the fork down and you need to be able to eat in a calorie deficit to lose weight. If you're hungry, you're not gonna be in a deficit. If you're hungry, eventually your Will Tennyson's willpower is gonna go down. You won't be able to stick to that diet and you will regain the weight. So you need to find the diet that works for you. And I can tell you from my experience, eating low calorie dense foods is the way to go. Coached thousands of people on different kinds of diet. Some have tried different diets and tried mine. They've tried my diet, tried different diet and compare. And for the most part, people who eat low calorie dense foods, they're able to keep the weight off. It's effective. If it's not effective for you, that is fine. But you need to be full and not starving and have a diet that you like and enjoy. Luckily, intermittent fasting and low carb or ketogenic diets get you to a similar physiological state that keeps your hunger hormones in check while you lose weight. Or do they? Or do you do that and then as soon as you eat, you binge? And you go on that ketogenic diet and what if you want to eat carbs? What if you want to have cake? Can you in fact stay on the keto diet forever? If you can, great. You got it. If you can't, what's going to happen when you do eat carbs? And trust me, I've seen people do it. I've coached people to do it. Gain 10, 15 pounds a couple days. They reintroduce the carbs and then they're a bloated mess and they wonder why. When you're on a keto diet, you're going to lose a lot of water weight and you're going to be tricked or fooled into thinking you lost more fat than you actually did. You're losing glycogen stores, which is loaded with water. Your muscles are going to be more flat. Yeah, you're going to look leaner because your body is literally dehydrated. Is that what you want? And then when you actually eat carbs again, because let's face it, where are you going to go where you can never eat carbs? You're going to functions with your friends. You're going to eat dinner. You're going to parties and you can't ever eat carbs. How's that working for you? Given all this, why are so many health experts and people in the medical establishment so focused on calories as a primary focus for weight loss? Why? Because if you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna lose weight. You know, the laws of thermodynamics. Why are we focused on lowering calories? Because if you eat less calories, you lose weight. The problem is, how do you eat less calories without being hungry, without being starving? 
You get my freaking cookbook. The doctors, scientists, and medical field, they should be doing studies on my cookbook, giving people a cookbook and saying, eat from the cookbook and let's see what happens in a month. Let's see what happens in a year. I bet they'd find they lose weight. For the most part, not everyone, but I bet most would. You can eat the foods that you want. You just change the calorie content. You put it into the circle. Too many calories, take some of the fat and sugar out, lower it into the circle. Doesn't taste good? It's boring plain salad. Make it taste better. Add condiments. Make it taste delicious. Everything should be in your circle. You can eat everything. Just make sure it has the appropriate amount of calories and keeps you full. Why isn't the focus to eat in such a way that modulates your hormones to where you store less fat, burn more fat, and be less hungry. So why do they focus on eating less calories? Because eating less calories is how you lose weight. It's either you eat less calories or you exercise more. You can't just think, oh, I'll just maximize my hormones. Obviously you want to maximize your hormones, but you can't do so at the expense of eating way too many calories and getting fat. So in the end, a calorie deficit is how you lose weight. And then when you get to your goal weight, when you get to where you want to be, maybe it's 15%, you eat at maintenance. And from maintenance, you main gain. Main gain means you add muscle without gaining a bunch of fat. You eat to get the body fat you want, and then you go from there. There's no reason to bulk and cut. How did it work for the biggest loser? Yo-yo dieting. It's not healthy. Better to lose weight slowly, get to a weight that's realistic for you, and then slowly build muscle from there. Of course, the laws of thermodynamics can't be broken, but why not just eat in a way that makes you less hungry? Why would anyone recommend cutting calories when it's been clearly shown that it will make you hungry and lethargic? Is that not what every single video that I talk about my cookbook is about? You eat foods that make you full and you're less hungry. It's calories in, calories out. I mean, what more can I say? You get the book, you eat the food, you're more full, easier to be in a deficit. Deficit equals weight loss. Where is other science? Do we need more science than that? Why are we doing study after study on these stupid small little details of tea went down by two calories and oh, I burnt this many more calories and the rice that's in the fridge. Oh, and the pasta that I cooked at room temperature, if I microwaved it five freaking times, it had a lower glycemic index. Why are we wasting so much time on stupidness? Is it the cutting of the calories that's making you hungry and lethargic or the fact that when you're cutting calories and you're in a deficit, you're losing a lot of fat and now you're at a lighter weight than your body wants you to be. And so then it's saying you should be more lethargic. You should sit around more and not burn anything off because your body doesn't want you to be that lean. Just because you maximize your hormones doesn't mean you won't get that same feeling. So let's say you're overweight and you maximize your hormones and then you lose weight. You don't think you're gonna be lethargic if you maximize your hormones and then lose too much weight? You think that you can just maximize your hormones and then you'll be shredded? Oh, you just maximize hormones some magic way and you'll be shredded. You think you're gonna go on the keto diet or only eat once a day and then you're gonna get shredded because your body will have tons of energy and be ripped because your hormones work? No, when you lose too much weight, your body is going to compensate by saying, you're tired. We're not giving you a lot of energy. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The diet you're on, if you try to get too lean, you won't be able to maintain it and you will feel like garbage. There is no magic diet. The best diet you can do is the one you can follow for the rest of your life. Why can't you eat balance from all four food groups? That is what I am preaching. I am preaching balance. Ending it here. GregDoucette.com for coaching. Greg Doucette, IP Pro. Bloops are over there. Watch one of the bloops. Follow me on the gram to talk. Buy my freaking cookbooks. Uh, and if you need a coach for trading, buy my coach plans from my team. We're going to do more plans than last time. And until next time, I'm out.